Ipsum Instantarium! What's going on, everyone? Welcome to my map, Siege Grove, A6D. Uh, I made some changes, and so let's talk about it. So first of all, you'll notice that I created a bit of a buffer zone between the spawn and the last area. This was a suggestion from Mega Pie Man PhD. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, I really actually like how this played, so uh, this was a good idea to do. Um, before, what was happening was the sniper could like snipe this balcony or basically watch all the doors from this spawn room here. So that was a problem on that side, but then also a sniper could sit in this balcony and counter snipe all the doors. So it created a lot of pacing problems because it was just a sniper v sniper battle and the last area was really hard to actually play in. So uh, this creates a dynamic where uh, I didn't push the spawn very far back, but I created a space where uh, the players are safe and don't have to knowingly walk into a sight line. Um, also, because of this wall, most of the sight line of the balcony is pretty much like occluded here. So you have you have a pretty tight amount of time. Plus, you can just jump here and you know the sniper has to be kind of on it to know that you're going to be there. So that creates a um, a little bit more of a challenge for sniper. So uh, maybe a small nerf for sniper. Also, I created a uh, indoor route on this side and pushed this uh, like a door forward here. The reason I did this was that I wanted last to not just be um, like the other team just feeding in until they win. Uh, this I think requires a little bit more strategy though when I play tested this version this route was pretty underused. So there may be changes that I make to this again. Um, but the idea was that I wanted to enable engineer to be a little bit more effective than previous versions so i introduced these two little cubbies here one with a full ammo and uh, the other just with a lot of space both of these are able to watch the control point or the the cap and also a couple entrances at the same time but can still be spammed out by someone so that was the idea nobody really played engineer much so it, I didn't get to see how effective these areas are as engineer. A lot of people were saying that they don't, they didn't feel like they could get a level three up. So maybe there is some pacing thing that I need to look into. So I also created a little, I guess, prop jump here, rock. Uh, the idea is that I, I actually want to be able to, like, rotate around if, say, we're trying to defend the choke here, and we want to rotate. Um, this allows you to rotate, but not like have to run all the way around. But it's there's no need for a ramp here. And the thing I like about this the most is that this is not an escape route. This is a like, you have to take your time to get up here. So you have to run up it, jump, and then crouch jump to get on this uh, balcony little lip that I also added. Uh, reason I added that was for the rollout. So when you uh, when you sticky jump to it, I missed. So when you sticky jump to it, it was hard to get in the doorway. So I added this little lip to assist with that, but also created a um, a way for you to kind of prop jump up to it. So this is a, a unique way to. Prop jumps are, I think, a, a great way to like allow people to get in and out of areas where they otherwise would need a ramp or a stairway. Um, so I've been playing with that idea a little bit more. So another thing that I added was forward spawns. Uh, this was a suggestion by many people that when you cap the point, you get your you get a cart, but the cart is. Uh, it's hard to like push it because you still spawn all the way in the back, which makes engineer kind of a required, you know, class just for the teleporter. So the forward spawns are set to try to solve that problem. So basically blue should be able to, or the attacking team at least, should be able to pressure the control point and the other team. So the other team should be fighting kind of around their buildings and not being able to push too far into the, the mid area. Um, forward spawn is pretty small, 
Uh, it was hard to decide where to put this because um, what I really want is a forward spawn that faces just faces forward just like this. So this would be a great place for it if not for the fact that you'd be standing in a pretty major uh, sight line. So um, sniper is relatively safe up here and uh, you know if everyone was spawning and fumbling out of here it would be pretty hard to not get spawn camped um, very easily. So putting it onto the side um, was my solution for that for now. Uh, one thing it did create though is I should have expected this, I suppose, but it created a situation where everyone pushed this way all the time. So most of the fighting happened in the balcony and uh, this room here, uh, which I guess is to be expected. It's the shortest path, it's the safest path. There's no sight line to cross. Um, though, while this route was underutilized, I think this route was still pretty powerful. So I'm not quite ready to just abandon the ideas of this route altogether, but um, I think one issue that I need to figure out is how to get this forward spawn to be more centralized. So one idea would be either this room or um, do something with this wall here. So maybe uh, I do have a little bit of space to work with here, so if I could maybe pull this wall back towards here and this becomes like a forward spawn. It's not actually that much distance, but maybe it's enough to um, allow there to be like more pressure on the, the cart. So another thing that I did was you'll notice that there is no longer a uh, cart outline in the unplayable area. Uh, this is thanks to someone named Ken from TF2 Maps. The, uh, you are able to set the render mode for prop dynamics um, using a uh, property called set output and basically that just makes it so it doesn't render the cart at all so you're able to set a render mode for the cart uh, or any prop dynamic for that matter render mode 10 seems to make it become invisible which is exactly what we want for the when the round starts so the cart you know it, the cart is sitting up here in the sky and is invisible and then when uh, the team caps when this this thing fires which is the um, the train becomes available then we set it render mode zero which makes the cart visible to everyone uh, this works really well actually and uh, uh, so both carts will be basically on this block here this is where they um, will mirror at and so what the effect of this is that the carts are now invisible during the cough portion of the gameplay. And uh, if you die, sometimes you end up spectating your own cart. So a few seconds after death, you'll spectate your own cart. And now what happens is you'll actually see it uh, above the area. So instead of it being like below and irrelevant, you'll actually be able to get some useful information. The idea is that I will be repositioning it at some point such that it looks a lot more like a normal spectator camera that you can like pan around with which actually is a little bit interesting that you could do maybe some maybe more interesting things with that so i made a lot of other small changes i guess um, one of the ones that i did was uh, i've been learning more about optimization um, not that this map was really a big laggy mess before but if i'm looking here in hammer um, I never had used area portals before because I thought that they were buggy and glitchy and expensive on the engine. And I started learning stuff about them. And so, you know, use them in basically every doorway. Uh, this, the scale of this map, this is not an issue, but I understand that on larger maps, you don't necessarily want to do this. Also, instead of using a large, what most people call a diaper skybox, where you just wrap the entire map in a giant brush, I started making more uh, thoughtful um, more thoughtful skybox stuff. So these are actually like discrete rooms now, and they're not just one gigantic thing. This has the effect of making the map run more efficiently, because uh, it doesn't render as much all the time, and my compiles are considerably faster. So the effect that area portals have is it says 
if you are in a room that's enclosed by area portals, it'll say, what things can I see from this room? And uh, so can I see another room that has you know sealed area portals? Can I see into that room? If so, I'll render the things in that room, otherwise I won't. So for example, if I walk over here, I'm rendering basically just stuff that I'm, I could see or I'm about to see, but I'm not rendering any of the stuff in the side room there. Now that I am, because I walk further out towards it. Uh, this is pretty big for optimization. So a lot of stuff, you'll basically only render stuff right when you need to see it. So um, to the end user, the player, they won't really notice any difference, but uh, this is basically making it so the frames in the game run like considerably better. Um, so this was fairly simple to do and uh, basically improved the uh, performance of the the map by, I don't know, 300% in, in frame count. So um, not that anyone complained about it before, but um, you know, happy to happy to add it in here. So another thing that I did, I removed the ability for someone to cap the point while they are disguised or invisible or under the effect of Uber. This is because the trigger here, which is a trigger multiple, this will detect any player whatsoever that comes in here, including invisible players, including Uber players. Any players under any conditions will be uh, detected and fire the outputs of um, touching the point or not touching the point. So obviously, you know, if you just disguise on point and sitting here capping it, that's obviously not okay. Even more so, um, being able to just sit on the point as an Ubered player seems a bit unfair. So um, while I think you should still be able to contest the point with Uber, I don't think you're, you should be able to cap while being Ubered. Um, so that ability has been removed by a filter, though it is still a bit buggy. So um, I've been investigating how I can improve this. So for example, I'm currently disguised as enemy pyro. And if I undisguise, then you can see that I'm not capping right now. And this is because the way that it works is you touch when you enter the volume, then that's what triggers the cap to start counting. So undisguising does not cause you to, let's say, enter the volume. So you, what you have to do is come back into it um, afterwards. So another issue, which is even more problematic in my mind, and still a, a current bug, if I walk under the point, then apply one of these status effects like cloak, uber, or disguise, then it says that I am capping while invisible. To the other team, the cap is just going on its own and someone's just here invisible. This is obviously exploitable and uh, probably it's worse with worst with the cloak and dagger. So this is something I definitely want to fix. However, currently uh, I have been unable to do so uh, for a lot of reasons. I've tried a lot of different things and um, nothing has seemed to work so far. So I'm probably going to take it apart again and try again. Uh, by using a different entity. But this is at least an improvement over what was here in previous versions where you could cap while all these things were happening. So at the very least, I prevent you coming into this volume with the status effect and then capping. Ideally, I want this to behave just like a normal control point. So obviously this is not you know, perfect logic yet. Uh, Gameplay wise, this wasn't a big problem for people because there was so much action happening here that it didn't really matter. Um, I don't think anyone even noticed this. And the only reason I noticed is because I was running around as spy and accidentally walked over the control point while disguised and uh, noticed that uh, um, the cap was happening. So, so another thing I've been very interested in is a, let's say data-driven approach. So there's this wonderful program called Cold Maps by a user called Tails. This program allows you to take a uh, overview screenshot of your map and load in a bunch of demos. So these are just you know the match recordings. And so you can see how uh, all the deaths happen and where they happen from and what the like various properties about it. 
So we're currently looking at all the sniper kills that happen. So, uh, so no surprise that the sniper balcony was the most effective place for sniper to be. Uh, I think most people would intuitively look at the map and say, yeah, that's probably going to be it. So another interesting thing about this is, so another interesting thing to see is where all the deaths happened. So uh, you can see by this that there is a lot of action that's happening around the control point, which is to be expected. A little bit in these flank buildings and a little bit kind of tertiarily outside. And a lot of death happening in this uh, forward route here. So this kind of aligns with the idea that you get the you get the cap, you get through forward spawn, and people tend to flood through this direction. So looking at this data, you can also see that side route on both sides, both teams, was fairly underutilized. So this is partially because of the fact that the uh, forward spawns were so far away from that. So with the play test, a lot of us did not choose to go that route. However, I still believe that that route is actually pretty good to stage a push and can make an engineer more viable on the map. So I don't necessarily want to change it yet. I want to get maybe a little bit more data and understanding about um, how people are playing it before I, I you know, go and overhaul that route again. Currently, based on this data, it's underutilized, but in maybe with different players, maybe in different contexts, it may be more utilized, we'll see. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll be changing that up most likely. I'm very into this idea of taking a analytical or data-driven approach. So uh, I like the qualitative things that you get from people saying, oh, this map is fun to play, or this map is interesting, or oh, I like such and such thing. But also I wanna go the quantitative route and say, okay, so what, like, where did people die? Where were your health packs affected? Like what was, what was, what's, what, what insights can I gain by looking at um, a heat map like this? So one interesting thing to see is that uh, all the all the half health packs on the map actually have fairly red areas on them. So that means that people were dying a lot by trying to get to the health packs, uh, which is interesting. Uh, I guess that's to be expected, but the data kind of validates that now. So were those health pack spots effective? Um, I don't know if this data necessarily says whether that's the case or not, but I do know that a lot of deaths are happening near health packs, which is probably good in that people were going for the health pack and couldn't make it because they were DMing. Is that bad because they were too far from it? You know, so it's sometimes hard to interpret the data, but uh, at least being able to view it like this is extremely helpful. And so that's basically all the changes that were made. Um, really, the only complaints that were had in the playtests were just around uh, uh, a few clipping issues, which have been resolved. And so um, I'm going to be trying to playtest this a lot more to get even more feedback and data so that I can decide on how to refactor the spaces of the map to you know improve the gameplay even further. I'm excited to see what happens because the um, the gameplay seems to be improving every single iteration. So uh, I, again, know that I'm onto something and uh, uh, hopefully being able to do this better. So that's really all I have. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next one.